Uh, my name is Stephen Rogers. I'm a retired professor from Harvard Business School. In 2022, I published my third book titled Successful Black Entrepreneurs. The catalyst for writing this book was um, that when I was a professor at Harvard Business School for seven years, um, it struck me that there was a dearth of content being taught at Harvard Business School about black businessmen and black businesswomen. So when I was there, um, I complained to the dean of the school about the absence of blacks in the case studies that we taught. You know, at Harvard Business School, we use the case study method, a Socratic method of teaching. So we have very few textbooks at Harvard Business School. And a case study is just a story about a business person who is facing a business problem. The problem could be a problem with marketing, it could be a problem in finance, it could be a problem with human resources, it could be a problem with entrepreneurship. And the whole mindset behind a case study is it's gonna take you, the reader, and put you in the shoes of the protagonist in that case study. So Harvard Business School has an inventory of about 10,000 case studies. 80% um, of all the case studies taught in business schools throughout the entire world come from Harvard Business School. And Harvard Business School generates about $150 million a year on selling those cases or allowing those cases, authorizing those schools to rent those cases or use those case studies. And so out of that 10,000 case studies, what I found was there was a dearth of case studies that had black protagonists. And each year, our first year and second year students at Harvard Business School, they would read approximately 300 case studies. And to my disappointment, what, what I found was at Harvard Business School, only two case studies out of the 300 had black protagonists. So first I went to the dean and I said, uh, can I try to encourage the heads of departments to write more case studies? He gave me approval to do that. I went to the head of various departments, told them that they should write more case studies that had black protagonists because our students need to see brilliant black men and brilliant black women making decisions uh, that, biz that impact positively and possibly negatively impact the business. Um, those department heads were all civil and they were all receptive to meeting with me and hearing me out. None of them uh, responded though in terms of actually getting anything done. Um, I actually said to them, if you don't know any black protagonists or people that you can write about, I will identify three to five people that you can write about. Um, and then I also suggested that they could use my case studies that I had written about black entrepreneurs in particular um, and add them to their curriculum if they wanted to. And I'd be willing to actually take my name off of the case study and they could publish it as their own. None of them took me up. So in the absence of that, I decided to write my own case studies. So I've written over 30 case studies that have black protagonists and I created a course where I could teach those case studies at Harvard Business School called Black Business Leaders and Entrepreneurship. So I've written more case studies with black protagonists than anybody else in the United States. Um, after I retired from Harvard Business School, I decided to get, take those case studies, some of those case studies, and compile them into a book. And I structured the book uh, in the same way, in, in line with the outline that I had for my course. And that was, my course was one, black, uh, black business leaders and entrepreneurship that was structured in the following manner. And that is, uh, I use what I identified as what's called the entrepreneurship spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, you had the person who is the antithesis of an entrepreneur or corporate executive. On the far other end of the spectrum, you had the person who was an entrepreneur in its purest form, the person who went the entrepreneur route via startup. And then in between those two data points, you had other people that were members of the entrepreneurship world. So you had the person going the entrepreneur route via acquisition, um, you had the person going the entrepreneurial route via franchising, and then you had what's called an entrepreneur, and that is a person who was an entrepreneur in a corporate setting. So when I wrote the book, I structured it in that same manner, and I had case studies that fit each one of those topics that I just identified right there. Um, the book was written in 2022. Um, it's a book that gives the history of black entrepreneurs, as well as, as I stated before, it is comprised of 10 case studies, um, and those case studies that I wrote and that are included in the book are case studies that are quite unique from other case studies. Um, I went out to Berkeley at one time 
um, after I created my course, Black Business Leaders and Entrepreneurship, and they uh, asked me to talk about the course because it was the only such course in the entire country that focused on black business people in particular. And they asked me what was unique about the cases that I wrote. And this is what's unique about my case studies that are in the book. One is um, all of the uh, uh, black entrepreneurs are people who have had not only monetary success, but success outside of uh, the entrepreneurial world. And that is, it was my definition of success is monetary success, but they also had to have given something back explicitly to the black community. So John Rogers, for example, is an entrepreneur that's cited in the book as a case study. And John Rogers uh, created a school on the south side of Chicago for black kids that focuses on teaching them the fundamentals of finance. Um, Valerie Daniel Carter is a black entrepreneur. She owns more uh, restaurants, fran uh, franchises than any other woman in the entire country. She's in Milwaukee. And Valerie Daniel Carter built a health center right in the black community of Milwaukee. So I only wrote about those people who had actually given something back to the black community. You'll see that in the book as well. Uh, the second thing that made my cases different was half of my cases were uh, included women. Um, if I had to do it all over again, quite frankly, I would also have uh, case studies that very explicitly identified gay men and women as well. Um, another thing that was different about my case studies that's in the book is I did not write about any athletes or entertainers because I wanted the everyday person who reads my book to know that intellectual brilliance is the what leads to uh, entrepreneurial success, not necessarily having a brand already in athleticism, a brand as an entertainer, and then uh, applying that brand to a product or a service uh, to grow a business. Um, I didn't want to convey the idea that people needed to be a super athlete or a super entertainer in order to have entrepreneurial success. There's no other racial group or ethnic group that defines their entrepreneurs by the people who are in entertainment or athleticism um, than, than the black community. And I didn't want to burden our community with that. I wanted people to see role models who were intellectually brilliant and had their success for that, from that area right there. And then finally, the other thing that made my case studies quite unique is every case study um, had some black history in it. So for example, I wrote a case study about Otis Gates. He was one of the first blacks to attend Harvard Business School. He started a real estate company in Roxbury, uh, Massachusetts, uh, the predominantly black community there. Uh, but Otis Gates, his father uh, was a Tuskegee Airman. Excuse me, his father was a Pullman porter. And a Pullman porter was uh, a person who worked on the trains uh, that traveled throughout the country. And it was primarily black men who uh, held those positions, and they were called Pullman porters. Back in the day, uh, when blacks couldn't get jobs in other places, the Pullman porter was one of the most prestigious jobs that a black could get. Now, even with that being said, Pullman porters were also uh, relegated to insults by whites primarily who were uh, travelers on the, uh, pla on the trains, and they would call them George. And despite they had other names, but they would automatically just call them George. George, lift my bag. George, please do this, do that. So with every case study, there's some black history in there that's associated with that uh, protagonist in the case study. That was the case with um, Otis Gates. The same was with John Rogers, who is the founder of REL Investment Companies, the largest black-owned uh, asset management firm in the country. And I, he cited when I spoke to him, that his father was a Tuskegee Airman, and a Tuskegee Airman was uh, the, fi the, the, the black pilots who served in the military, and um, those black pilots uh, were called Tuskegee Airmen, and they were not allowed at that time, the military was not integrated, and so the only way that blacks could fly was uh, with the Tuskegee Airmen. So his father was one of those uh, famed Tuskegee Airmen, and I told the story in the case study about the history of the Tuskegee Airmen. So that's what made my case studies unique. I, that They are all compiled in my book, um, and the book is one uh, that, again, gives the history of black entrepreneurship at its beginning to where we are today. It also includes, fascinatingly, this other category uh, and this other topic around why blacks, the challenges that blacks have as entrepreneurs. 
And that challenge, a couple of challenges that they have includes the fact that many blacks have historically had to, if they didn't target black audience and black customers, they had to actually disguise themselves or completely uh, eliminate the fact that they were black. And what they had to do was they would do that so that white people would buy their products. Uh, a great example of that even today is Robert Smith. And Robert Smith um, is a billionaire and he's a private equity investor. And Robert Smith is uh, noted as saying a couple of years ago that you don't see his face on his website because he doesn't want white people uh, to look at the website and decide not to do business with him because he's a black man. So that is highlighted in the book as well in terms of that one of the challenges facing black entrepreneurs historically as well as challenges facing black entrepreneurs today.